And okay. So um, thanks for joining us. Still a few more people coming in. <laughs> Okay, so I'll I'll get started. Um, so today we're here to talk about um, Twitter or X, and um, essentially give you some ideas of how how you can make a decision on whether you should stay or or whether it's time for, for you and your organisation to leave. Um, today I'm joined by Bobby and I'm joined by um, Sue and Teresa. It feels weird saying Sue and Teresa because it's normally Sue and Alia, um, but I'm delighted <laughs> to have um, Sue and Teresa um, here today. Um, I'll just kick off with, with a few little introductions. Um, so like I said, I'm Bobby, um, founder of Be More Digital, which is a um, practical training, coaching and delivery um, organisation for the third sector, specifically looking at, at digital, um, ranging from your digital marketing and strategic comms to um, your tools and processes and how to embed digital ways of working. Um, and Sue is also on the Be More Digital team and is one of my co-directors. Sue, do you want to say hi? Hello. Hi, I'm Sue. Um, yeah, my work with Bobby, I have done for a few years now. And I specialise particularly in the social media side of things, um, do all of our social media marketing and have a, a real knowledge of what's going out there at the moment. Here. And we're delighted to also have Teresa on this call today. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Hello, great to be here with a bit more digital team. Uh, I'm Teresa, I'm a marketing consultant and also specialize in social media and content marketing and big Twitter addict, so I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Teresa's recently gone freelance, so we wanted to uh, bring her in on this um, to, to kind of welcome her to the to the freelance world. Mm -hmm. And um, also we met her on Twitter, so it's good to have that connection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So one of the ways that that I kind of like to set up any kind of um, conversation around making a decision or or starting any kind of challenge and pro program is to to look at the the hopes and fears behind um, that challenge. Um, so you know, understanding your hopes and fears, it can kind of equip you with with an understanding of what lies beneath. Um, what we're finding with with the Twitter X conundrum is, you know, we've all got quite positive memories. As Teresa said, you know, Teresa and I met on Twitter. We forged quite a strong relationship on Twitter, and I think it was about three years before we actually met. Um, but we knew each other and and kind of really cared about each other's values. Um, so, you know, there's there's obviously quite a lot of emotional. Um, connections for, for quite a few of us behind um, Twitter. Um, so quite often when I'm faced with this, it's it's about understanding kind of why do we maybe feel uncomfortable? What are the things that um, we're struggling with? On the, on the flip side, why might we feel excited about that challenge? Essentially, it's a, it's a different view of maybe the pros and cons list, and it helps you delve a little bit deeper into the questions. Um, so one of the first things that I would suggest you do as a team um, is, is really dig into those hopes and fears um, around your engagement with Twitter and your organisation. You know, there may be some organisations where it is right to remain, but there are some organisations that, that are really, really struggling. I noticed this week, um, Oh, can Sue, can you mute just to make sure, can everyone make sure they're muting just to make sure there's no background noise? Um, yeah, so um, I noticed this week or last week, mermaids have left Twitter and that's obviously understandable because of all the transphobic um, hate that is happening, um, but also the, the reduction of, of the safety nets for, for their community. So having those hopes and fears exercise, along with one that I'll take you through a little bit later, will really help you kind of understand what you need to explore when you're looking to make, make decisions. Um, but as we move on, let's, let's go to Teresa and talk about what's actually happening. 
Thanks, Bobby. Uh, so that was really hard to create this slide because I felt like every single day there was a new story. So I literally updated it today. Uh, it's really hard to keep up with Twitter X the last year or so. And obviously having that as timeline, pretty much the time Elon Musk took over. And that was a big shift from ethics, from all the considerations and all the changes and the rumors that are around Twitter. And just a summary, really, of all the things that are concerning everyone. So first of all, we see that there's a growing number of people living and organizations. And this could be for many reasons, but as Bobby said, it's just deciding in the end if it makes sense to still be on the platform. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, a recent change was Twitter decided, for example, to remove the headlines from the link posts. So that was an attempt on their end uh, for you not to be able to see the organization. So just to keep the traffic on the channel and not get people on external news sites. But also that's a problem on that because there's an issue with accessibility. Uh, if you see a news story, all of a sudden you just see the image, you don't see the link post, you don't see the headline. So this is a problem, a really big problem for accessibility. There are many concerns on moderation. It feels like there are so many people that have been fired from that team that, including moderation, it really affects the way the platform is working. So it's not the same level of safety for a community. You don't feel like you're really supported. And there are many really communities that are really worried and many organizations living. Uh, I've seen many concerns about metrics. The analytics, sometimes they're not very consistent. The numbers might not be accurate. There are many concerns that it doesn't feel as consistent as before. Uh, many conversations, uh, especially lately on misinformation, so even this week, there was started a conversation with the EU and the risk of having further fines on not really just uh, sticking to the right moderation again and making sure that there is that filtering on what is accurate in facts and what is not. And then there are more rumors. And that's when we started that conversation about this webinar on the possibility of having Twitter as a paid access for everyone. So every single user would have to be a paid member. This might not be the case, or at least it might be a rumor, but there are definitely more tiered charges coming in if you want uh, an access with no ads or any other levels. And then there was also Twitter Blue that was introduced uh, a few months ago or last year. And it's a paid subscription where you get more access, you get that blue tick verification, and also you need to have that access in order to run ads. So pretty much many changes on all directions. And it's just trying to navigate that and understand what is happening, what makes sense for your organization or for you personally in order to decide if you're staying. Yeah, there's a, a lot of uncertainty at the moment. And I think um, for, for us, when we were kind of talking about setting this up, it was it was really with the with the knowledge that across the sector, social media isn't often our only role when we're um, working in our in our organizations. You know, we've got um, you know, email marketing, sometimes fundraising as well, um, sometimes PR and, and other media management. So having this uncertainty is, is really stressful um, for us. Um, and um, it was really brought home actually when, when Alia and myself were running an unconference on social media um, for Trust and Foundations. There's a blog on, on the Be More Digital website about it. Um, and, you know, the, the Trust and Foundation world had been relying on Twitter for so long, they were completely lost um, because, you know, it had been such a good and sustained communications channel for these organisations. You know, they knew that they were able to talk to their grantees and also work on some policy and, and, and develop change across the sector as well through their space on Twitter. And um, yeah, now with everything changing so continuously and, and without really having much lead time in those changes, it's it's becoming really, really difficult um, to, to manage. So as we, we've already kind of looked at, at one way that can kind of help you, that's more of a, a kind of emotive thoughts and feelings. Um, this, this way is, is a, in a matrix. So, so what you can do is you can start by writing what you already know. So we know that for the majority of people, reach is reducing, engagement is affected, safety is a concern, there's more effort needed to, to build connection, um, and the list goes on. So what we can do is we can um, put one, one figure 
against that being the ne negative impact. Um, so, you know, the, the negative impact of reach reducing on our organisation is obviously between one and five, quite high at five. Um, and then obviously the you can change, I put reputational risk, it can be, you know, income risk, it can be stress in the team, whatever you want to put as your additional thing. Um, and you can kind of use as a secondary review. Um, and the idea here is just to give you an indicator around how likely it is that you're going to need to start to plan to exit. Um, so here, obviously, with the safety as a concern, um, safety of our community as a concern, um, as charities we and, and social enterprises, we want to make sure that our community are, are safe and we've got a lot of ethical and moral things in the background to think about. Um, so with that line, it scores a 10. Um, with with this matrix, we've got a total of, of 20 at the overall score, which would suggest that it's probably time to to, to plan that exit strategy and, and rethink and look at, at what you might be doing. Um, but if we're going to do that, where can we go? What are the what are the other options? And that was the the other kind of key thought and, and question that came out of that on conference um, that myself and Alia ran in in August. And that leads me to Sue. I'll just uh, put my microphone back on. So, gosh, where can you go other than Twitter? Now, obviously, these I'm going to run through a few examples at quite high speed because there are so many out there to look at. And it will totally depend on your organisation and what you're hoping to achieve as to, to what the best platforms were. Um, we started off looking at the usual suspects. We, we looked at our Instagram, our Facebook and our LinkedIn, TikTok um, and, and thought about can you turn these on, on their heads? Can you use them in a different way with your marketing? Is there a way that you haven't thought of yet? Because they're not going anywhere for now. Um, other alternatives to Twitter, though, there are hundreds. Um, so we've started off uh, looking at threads, um, which is obviously meta owned. Um, I'm just going to run through a few pros and cons of each uh, platform quite briefly. But if you do need any more information, do come back to us and, and shout. Um, so threads, yeah, lovely atmosphere, but we're finding it quite low engagement at the moment. Um, there are updates happening weekly on threads. It started off with very limited functionality, you know, no alt text, uh, no hashtag searchability, but it's it's becoming better weekly. There is still limited functionality, but um, Adam Mossery, who's um, the head of Instagram, is constantly updating it. So it's a really interesting place to be right now. You do need Instagram to log on if you're not familiar with it, and you cannot delete your Threads account without losing your Instagram too. So obviously you're kind of tied into Threads once you get on there. But it's a really pleasant place to be at the moment, which is lovely. Um, as Adam put it, it's a less angry place for conversation. So it's a really interesting alternative to Twitter because it, it lacks that trolling aspect, that, that kind of nasty aspect that Twitter has sadly become quite familiar with um, over recent the last year really um if not before um it's got no ads for now but obviously we don't know where any of these platforms are going to go in the future um one of the other rivals uh, to twitter that's um, up and coming at the moment blue sky i don't know if anybody's on blue sky social at the moment um it's probably the most similar karen's on it i've seen her wave um, it's probably the closest to Twitter that you can get. Jonathan's given us a thumbs up. Excellent. Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter, set it up. Um, it's decentralized, so it's, users create their own server to be on there. So there are um, random moderation rules, um, but apparently it's a nice place to be. It does need an invite code and there is a waiting list currently. Uh, they're heard introducing the ability to delete your Threads account. Oh, interesting, Becky, if that's coming soon. Um, that will be good because I think a lot of people feel like they are trapped on threads once they get there because of losing your Instagram and your other meta setups. So, so yeah, Blue Sky Social definitely want to look at. Thanks, Becky. I'd love to find, I love the source. I like reading things as they come in. Uh, what else have I put down there? Mastodon. Uh, Mastodon came about in 2016. It's a, another multi-server platform. Um, so it's very, I find the user experience on there is quite complicated. It's not the most user-friendly platform. Um, you have to join a server and each server is differently owned and moderated. You can't transfer your posts between servers if you're trying to change. Uh, but there are no ads um, and there are a lot of Twitter features on there. So it is a, an interesting place to check out. Um, I'm going to really skim over Truth Social. It's owned by Donald Trump. 
Um, it's built the same as Mastodon with an open source code. I haven't ventured. I'm, I'm not sure I will. <laughs> but obviously, it's it's on the list of social media networks at the moment. Um, I've put down Discord, uh, originally invented for gamers. It's very much a video chat kind of platform where people chat. They do watch parties. Um, it feels a bit like Slack or Teams, if anybody's familiar with those. It's like group communications. Um, there are servers that categorize discussions, so you can find things by genre, which is kind of lacking on threads at the moment. That's searchability by topic. Um, it's a really good place for hanging out, as they call it. Um, so yeah, a Discord is a very American one, but again, it's, it's something else to look at if it looks appealing for your business, your organization, or you personally. Um, we've got Reddit again, very much like Discord, a lot less like Twitter. Um, things are organized into specific themes called Shreddits, um, lots of interests that you can follow. So again, that searchability function is really good on there. It's a community forum rather than kind of a social media platform. But again, it might be a good place to host chats, um, a lot like Discord. A um, few others coming onto the market. Spill um, is apparently the best for supporting black owned businesses. Um, former Twitter employees um, have set this up uh, to create safety for diverse communities. So it's very much um, lots of people saying it's it's Twitter for um, for black people. It's in um, beta at the moment, so it's on waiting list or invite invitation only. Um, only on iOS and no Android on that one, but apparently one to watch out for at the moment. I've also written down Counter Social, um, very much Twitter, but they've got AI coming up for their moderation, uh, their content moderation, which is interesting. Um, so not person led, computer led on that one. Uh, they have a private mode, they have self destructing posts, which is quite interesting. They disappear quite quickly. Um, free at the moment, but they charge for a pro account. Uh, but no ads. Um, lots of reports of it kind of being inaccessible at times to get on. Um, so yes, not not so much there. Not not one to maybe rely on all the time. Uh, what else have I put? I put Vivo down, owned by YouTube, very much like Instagram. Lots of photo content on there. T uh, two social that was um, again set up by Google and Twitter employees. It's like a very stripped down Twitter. Very simple. They do a check mark, very, uh, so very huge similarities to Twitter on that one. Again, it's quite new. There is a waiting list. Um, it's still in testing phase. Um, so, but again, one to look out for, perhaps try, do some more research on as to who's on there. Um, Clubhouse. Clubhouse was one of my favorites when it set up in lockdown. Um, I very quickly went off it because it is audio only. I don't know if anybody's still on there. There was a massive surge of people in lockdown going on there because of the um, idea of heading into a room and listening to conversations like this. You can um, head in there and, and focus very much on certain subjects, chats, you get lots of experts standing up and saying things, but it is um, no way to moderate it. People can pretty much say anything they want on there. There's no, um, I, there's no verification um, and limited discoverability. It's quite hard to advertise what you do. There's no, that the searchability is lacking. Um, and we found it very inaccessible. Uh, they don't have captions. Um, it is only for people who can hear what's being said. Um, so obviously it lost its popularity, unfortunately, because of that. But it's still around and it's still doing interesting things. Um, Tumblr I've put on here because it's, um, it's a microblogging platform, but it's a place to go and share similar interests. Um, you can unfortunately search on there for kind of darker to topics. There is no moderation. Um, and it, it has been reported to glorify kind of some dangerous behaviors. So it's it's one to, to look out for, I think. Um, that was a, put on a 2007 Tumblr came to being. I've also put some little bits about some relatively, I think not very well known ones. Post is a new social media platform up and coming, mainly for journalists, news readers, people who like to write. Uh, it's a microblogging platform with no word limit. But again, the sim there are similarities with all of these with Twitter. Um, I've put uh, Diaspora on there and Co-host. Um, they, they all have very, very similar setups. Co-host Co is again in the beta testing period, limited features, but it's not, apparently rumors have, are it has no algorithm at the moment, um, which is one of the few social media platforms not to be controlled by, by an algorithm and rules. Um, and Diaspora is a um, non-profit social media network. Uh, user owned. Um, it's very confusing to get on there. I don't find their user experience very good. 
and you have to choose pods to go and sit in. But yes, there are loads. These are only a few examples. I've heard this week about one called Bastion and Spoutable, which have been recommended to me. Um, I can very happily send out a list if anybody wants to go and do some more research into these. But obviously there are different audiences on each platform and they will be very different user experiences depending on why you're going to them and what you're looking for. So you research is the key, have a look around, join a few, see what other people are saying about them and, and see where you ask your audience, where are they? Where are they going to hang out? Um, and see if you can work out precisely where they've gone before you make that move. Sorry, I whizzed through that at 90 miles an hour. Thanks, Sue. Um, I just wanted to, to kind of add and land on um, when we were planning this session, we had quite a, a detailed conversation about what we miss when we're not on Twitter. Um, so Teresa has a lot of experience creating um, campaigns, big campaigns that have incredible reach um, through through hashtags and and out of all of the ones that you've suggested, it's it's hard to see what might be the equivalent for for bringing a lot of conversations around the same subject in a in a campaign or a policy changing kind of way, um, which just highlights how we might have to change our our digital approach to campaigning um with that and um, and also the the conversations you know last night it was charity hour i wasn't part of it but as as always so you were there with with be more digital and and engaging in lots of conversations and i mean i guess there's there's a few spaces where you know the the pod type environment or the the kind of um spaces where we can have particular conversations we can still find but if it's difficult to get on, how do we how do we go about finding those spaces? Um, Teresa, what are your thoughts on, on yeah, these platforms true. and other I options? think it's exactly what you were saying on the things we're missing from Twitter if we decide to live forever, that you can't find them at least not all together in one platform. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether it's about campaign and joining big campaigns, like Giving Tuesday, for example, or all the big hashtags that are trending throughout the year, whether it's about campaigning, so if you want to put more pressure and like reach the right people, even like reaching journalists, like all the different things, catching up with events, live uh, attendance on conferences, the things that are really like making Twitter what it is, the good mm -hmm. side of it. So it's still trying to find a way to find the channels that work for us. And I really hope that Threads gets into a better version of Twitter. I really hope yeah. that, but it's still like a long way to go. Like you can't predict if it's going to go into the states that we want. So mm -hmm. it's still a stage of trying to discover different channels, at least to think of what works for you and what you're looking for your organization to see what works in the end. So it's not about trying every single channel and just being everywhere, but it's just thinking, what are the things that I'm really missing from Twitter mm -hmm. if all of a sudden it disappears or I'm just living? And just yeah, and there, yeah. As, as Jonathan said in the chat, it's, it's not just that functionality, it's, you know, threads, we all joined and got excited about mm. but then it became a little bit barren and yeah. <laughs> not many people were saying things and um not many people were having conversations and and it meant that the those kind of those spaces where if you are working on a campaign where where you're looking for change you know the because there was a huge amount of journalists and political activists mm. and politicians and other charity professionals on Twitter, you could really make a difference through one platform. Whereas now, because everyone has has kind of scattered and we don't know where everyone is just yet, and no one's really found their new home, um, we it's not just about that kind of functionality. It's it's all also about where where is that are those kind of key audiences that you're looking to to talk to. So yeah, as we we're having the conversation, preparing for this session, we're trying to think how can we make it more practical? Because obviously we could be talking for hours about Twitter, what we like, what we hate, uh, but we still wanted to make sure that we provide some content, a checklist in the end for everyone, whether it's for your personal use or professional for your organization, to have that time to think, how do I want to approach the situation with Twitter? What are the things I need to consider 
if I want to live, whether it's right now or in the future. So try to organize that in different sections from the things you need to start thinking. So starting with the audience, the first question is, is my audience still on Twitter? Am I just posting, but I feel like the engagement is not the same because people already left. How does my community feel about my presence on Twitter? What's the sentiment? Because if we feel that our supporters are not really keen anymore on staying in the platform, then it doesn't make sense to use your time there. Then there's objectives. So why are you using Twitter and what we're discussing now about all the different channels? Why do you want to be on a specific platform and how do you want to use it? So starting by that point, it helps you understand on the benefits of the platform, but also on the issues that you need to consider. And then when thinking of objectives, it's also about the metrics. How are you finding your engagement, your reach, all the things that matter to you in terms of performance on the channel? Is this still the same for Twitter? Has it improved? Have you seen it been declined? So it's really trying to understand on a practical way on what works and what you want to change. So thinking of the other channels is what we're just discussing. What are the alternative options? What makes sense for you? How much time do you need to put on getting on a new channel? Because that was also what we're discussing on planning this session. It, it's a lot of work to get on a new channel. It takes a lot of time. There is effort in order to get it going, get the engagement, get your followers there. So do you have this time? Do you have the capacity to get into a new channel and put that effort to make it work? Then there's the stakeholders. It's not just one person obviously deciding for the organization. You want to think, what does a potential exit look like? What's the strategy? First, you need to have that conversation internally, discuss with everyone within the team or the organization, the pros and cons. How are you thinking about it? How would your supporters uh, feel about this decision? And then how do you communicate your decision? So it's all the different steps on making sure that you have a more strategic approach. And when we're thinking of the strategy, you also want to prepare, whether you're planning to live now or in the future, it's probably a best idea to be prepared rather than deciding one day, all of a sudden I'm going to live and I'm stop using Twitter. So what's a comms plan looking like? Is it about creating, for example, a blog post to announce your decision? You might want to create a tweet where you're explaining that you're not active anymore on the account. You might want to download your data from your archive just to make sure you have access to all your tweets. You can create a list of all your key followers, those who you want to make sure that you're not missing. And also you want to make sure, starting from your website and all your other channels, that you're directing people to where you're active. So if someone is used to finding your organization on Twitter, you want to make sure that they know that now, for example, you're on threads or you're spending more time on Facebook and Instagram. So you want to make sure that they know where to find you if they were just to use to spend time on this channel. And of course, there's the big part of the ethical considerations and safety. It's probably a good idea to discuss with other organizations or individuals who have already left Twitter. What was the thinking? What was the decision process? What were the steps involving from actually thinking about it to making it happen? And then you want, will want to think, how is the moderation? How is that affecting your community? Do you feel that you already see a concern in terms of the messages, of the kind of comments you receive? Have you seen a change? So how do all these affect your organization and of course your community and also the image of your organization? If you being on Twitter is something that really impacts your organization in a negative way, is it still a good idea to be on the channel? So obviously it's not an easy decision. There are many things to consider. But it's good to have that thinking, to be more strategic when you decide to do that exit, if you decide to leave the channel at some point. And we'll make sure we share that with everyone and have it on the Be More Digital site. So feel free to have a think on that. Yeah, I've I've shared a link in the in the chat, but we'll we'll be um, uploading it to the the free resources on the Be More Digital website um, later today, so you can download it and and share it with as many people as as can make use of it um i think the the kind of key thing to highlight is for many of us we you know, we've we've built up quite a big following um but sometimes if that following isn't active anymore and isn't really engaging then are they even there anymore and that's you know just because the following number is still there um we need to find ways of, of reaching those people and and questioning if if they're they're there um and if they're not finding other ways so like sue said um on her part we've we've been doing a lot on um threads but equally i've been doing a lot on LinkedIn, linkedin 
um, just to kind of explore that and um, and see where people are and what kind of conversations are happening. And I think that's kind of the step that I would encourage everyone to take. If you take one practical thing to do um, after this, it's like, look at the checklist, but, but find somewhere where you feel comfortable and you feel curious enough to want to learn how to use our platform um, as, as an individual or as an organization. And that will really kind of help you. Um, Absolutely. We, we, the, one of the first things we did, didn't we, Bobby, is to go on the other platforms we were already on. Rather than wasting a lot of time and energy setting up somewhere new, we looked at LinkedIn. How are we using it? Can we use it better? Can we use it differently? We looked at our Facebook um, and then, didn't we, made the decision to go onto threads and have a look and a test and a see where our audience is. But don't even be afraid to do things differently in the places you are already. Because I think most of us, if not all of us, are on more than one platform. We're not all just on Twitter. Um, and, and I think sometimes we've we've certainly been um, neglecting in the past other platforms that we already have a presence on. So find a different way to use them. See if there's a new way. See if your audience has moved backwards to Facebook or to LinkedIn. Because they might not have gone somewhere new. They might be sitting comfortably enclosed in the spaces that they understand. And that leads us quite nicely on the, the idea of setting up from scratch. And um, so you have done this more than out of the three of us. We've all done it a lot, but you've done it most. So we, we nominated you to lead this. Thanks. No, I have. I've, I've set up an awful lot of small um, companies trying to work out where they're supposed to be, where they where they start. Um, I've started more Twitter accounts than I, I care to think about over the past few years. Um, but, it, you know, it's always been a journey, which is fantastic. So Teresa um, did uh, just scoot on a few of these points. Do, if you're going to leave um, X, Twitter for good, download your archive. It's quite a lot of information to download, but you can get a record of pretty much everything you've done on Twitter. Um, then you'll still have your posts, your contacts, your adverts, if you've taken out adverts on there. I'm just going to put the link now in the chat for anybody who's interested. Uh, it'll just take you through to where you can access your data on Twitter. Um, once you've left, obviously, there is a little grace period, but you you do go and your um, your history will be erased, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, if, if that's something that's important to you, do download all your information. You'll have it with you. Um, I think it comes in something very awkward, like an HDMI file or something, but it is definitely worth having a look at. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick and choose what to download. Do you know, Bobby, or does it just come in one big wodge? Uh, but do have the instructions there. From, from what? from when i've done it so i did it when elon took over um you had to do it through the app um it's it's quite frustrating um i ended up with a ridiculous amount of really really old photos from my personal twitter i mean i've been on twitter since i think it was like 18 months old as a platform so it's been a long long time that i've been there and i've I mean, I started off on the platform as Bobby Robson Art. So I was I was an art student at the time. And it was those conversations were about kind of community arts projects and, and community education and arts education. So there was a lot. It was very varied and it was a huge file. Um, but it was also a huge file that I ended up having to download onto my phone. Um, but obviously if you've got the app on your on your computer it's it's a bit easier you can do it there um they may have changed it since then i mean like i said it was a year ago so <laughs> these things change absolutely they are being updated constantly so do have a look um i feel more confident in threads if it wasn't mining so much data of oh, that's a really interesting point elizabeth um yeah when i don't think any of us are really sure what Threads is doing in the background, really, at the moment. So um, one to keep an eye on. Um, what else did we have? Yes, we had communicate with your followers, your current followers. Tell them where you're going, where what your thoughts are. Have that conversation. It's a fantastic way to engage with people. It's a fantastic way to work out where your audience is. Um, do a poll, have a chat. Uh, they might all be leaving to a certain network, which will help your decision enormously. But if you don't talk to people, you won't be able to find out. 
Um, tell them where you're going, tell them when you're going, keep them fully engaged in the process and the thoughts going through you and your organization's um, heads. Um, social media is there as a conversation and it's one we should be having. Um, update your website buttons. I have come across a number of companies recently who still have their Twitter little widget on their websites, even though they're not using it. Bobby's got a hand up. Disgraceful. Um, it's only because our current website is Squarespace and Squarespace haven't updated their icons yet. <laughs> very true, very true. And there are a number of that haven't. But take off, if, you, if you've left Twitter, take off your little widget. Make sure on Facebook you don't still have a link. Um, try and keep everything updated, again, with your journey and where you're going, because your followers need to know in order to follow you somewhere else. So do have a look at that update. Um, it's not just websites. It's if you've got those little holding pages or, a, you know, a link tree page or or ever. Yes, we're on Squarespace too, constantly checking to see if they've updated it. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing we're constantly doing at the moment is trying to work out which um, which planning platform for, for scheduling posts is going to is going to get threads first? I see a lot of nods there, uh, because nobody's got the ability yet to pre-schedule posts to threads, uh, but it has to come surely. I think that's holding a lot of people back. Buffer still isn't playing ball. You're absolutely right with threads or blue sky. Yeah, there's a few. Um, yeah, so so yeah, updating your website buttons and keeping an eye on these updates to see who's going to take on which platform next. Definitely. Uh, do set up and optimize your new profile. If you are joining a new social media platform, please set up properly, take your time, um, make sure all your links are there, that it's linked to your, to your Facebook or linked to your LinkedIn. Um, make sure your name and your branding and your bio are all consistent with your brand. Um, a number of people starting out on threads haven't been able to get the name that they wanted. Um, I, so I've seen changes in company names, which then becomes less consistent and more difficult to find if you're searching for somebody. So do try and think about consistency across the platforms with your branding, which will help people to find you, which is ultimately what you need. Um, follow your old followers, but only if it's appropriate. <laughs> so you will have a list of massive followers on Twitter. Feel free to try and find them on threads or, um, oh yes, a good point. Threads is not available in the EU. So huge audience there, depending on where your company's aiming. Um, and a few of them are very country centric at the moment. Again, they are changing all the time and it's really worth keeping an eye on all these updates coming out. But yes, follow your followers if it's appropriate. You might find like Bobby, you've been on uh, Twitter since the very, very beginning and you might not need all those people. They might not be helpful to you. They might not engage in your organization. It might be time for a complete clean out and a whole new set of followers. So have a look at your followers. We've got lots of lists that we've made on Twitter, which is another feature I would miss, um, of people that we work with in the industry, people that we like to follow because they say interesting things. Um, so it's worth having a look through them all, seeing where those people are. Have they gone over to Threads or Blue Sky? Where are they? Where can you find them? Are you still? Are they still relevant to follow? Are they still relevant to have as a follower? Um, so do use it as an opportunity to have a really good spring clean or uh, and find that new fresh audience or to go back to, to what you had there and try, and try and get those people back again if it's working for you on, um, on Twitter. Um, have a clear purpose. Um, yeah, when you don't just do, as Teresa said, go on every single one of these platforms and, and, and start throwing out random posts. It won't help you or your organization. Have a purpose. Where is it you're trying to target? Who are you trying to find? Um, and where is the best use of your time? Um, as a social media manager, you cannot, cannot come up with enough content to go on every single platform. And, and it looks awful if you do, because nobody wants to see the same things. Lots of people are still hanging around on Twitter while starting Threads or Blue Sky, and they don't want to see the same thing across every platform. Um, so have a, have, a, have a clear purpose about where you're going and why you're doing it. Um, and this will come after, as I've said, the conversations and the, and the list that, that Bobby and Teresa have said to have a look through. Um, set measurable targets. Now, this is a really interesting one. We do lots of workshops on KPIs and target setting and having um, clear measurables to look at how you're doing in each platform. However, Threads has yet to have the ability to do much more than see who's liked your posts. Um, you can do followers and you can do two people have liked my post, but it, they don't have the analytics yet 
um, set up in terms of the depth that you can get off, for example, Instagram or LinkedIn. Um, so measure what you can, maybe set yourself targets of we will have so many followers on threads by this point, but if we don't, let's look at why, and maybe it's not the place we need to be. Um, but set yourself some goals, set yourself some idea of where you want to be, what you're trying to achieve. Um, look at trends. Threads is an amazing platform for trends. This week, it's, um, it's all about dear admin, no, dear algorithm, please send me a, a list of people you want to. They're really fun, uh, whether they achieve much, uh, but it is about joining in the conversation at the moment um, and trying to get that conversation started and maybe sell to people who you are and why you're there. But have a look at them. Um, along with trends, you know, we look at things like the awareness days. Um, obviously, hashtags are a bit hazy yet um, on some of the platforms. Um, the searchability function on, on threads is certainly not developed yet. But um, it's worth looking at what days people are celebrating, what days you could talk about. There was an awful lot about a mental health awareness day the other day, which was really nice to read and to look at. But So have a look at them. Don't be afraid of, of trends. And they do differ. Teresa, you're saying tips and examples of how charities use threads. Oh yes, trying to keep guide update, thank you. So there's a link just gone in the chat there about how charities particularly are using these things um, on threads, which is great. Wherever you go, whatever you do, please be genuine, be yourself, be your, your company's um, brand and voice, um, be genuine. Threads is a lovely place because it is so positive at the moment and it's so nice and everyone's being really kind to everybody and it really is quite a change from Twitter. Let's keep it like that. Let's be genuine. Let's try and get rid of the trolls. Um, and last but not least, as everyone knows, engage. Engage, engage, engage. Talk, start the conversations, post on other people's posts, retweet, refollow, rethread, wherever you are, keep that activity going as much as possible because that is how you will be discovered um, and how you'll get people to come back to your platform and follow you um, at the end of the day. It is all about engagement. I think on that, the, the thing that I've been saying for years, um, I mean, okay. when I say years, I mean at least 10 years of delivering social media training and, and other kind of digital comms training. Um, we often approach social media as if we're we've got something to say and we just we just spout out what we what we do and we forget the key element of social networking and social media being social so rather than taking an approach of if i shout it people will see it if you take an approach of having conversations Think of it as if you were in a real physical room with people. People would ignore you if you stood up on top of a chair and shouted, my name's Bobby and I'm amazing at digital training. But if you had conversations with individuals in that room about digital training, then they probably understand that you are quite good at digital training you see and they'll listen to you so um in terms of engagement it's not just about reposting and liking like actually have conversations with people um but most importantly on on the mental health point look after yourself and if you're finding it overwhelming find a buddy or take a break or just say i need i, I need a moment and it's okay we need to remember that everyone that behind every organizational account is one two maybe three people and they need their mental health support and and their mental health days and Teresa, you shared a, an interesting um, linkedin post recently about about managing your mental health and, and taking that time um and i think my third point is about we don't ever own <laughs> the the relationships on social media so the what we need to do is stop thinking about we have 1200 followers over here or however many thousand followers they're not ours they're people who are interested in what we can say and so our job on those platforms is to try and engage them in spaces that we own so that might be your email list it might be coming to events it might be getting them involved and doing um some fundraising for you the the kind of the tactic that we need to take is not necessarily about follower growth but it's about how do we convert them into real allies of our organization so 
there's been lots of conversations in the chat and i'm gonna because we've been recording it i'm gonna um grab all the links um to, to add um but i think now's a good opportunity to kind of open out we've got another 10 minutes before um the session is due to close so please if you've got any questions just come off mute and, and ask or, or pop them in the chat if you prefer thank you's put a really interesting post about the um overview of the data privacy issues with threads and meta at the moment um which is definitely worth having a look at because i mean i think to be honest they've all got data privacy issues i don't think there is a foolproof social media platform yet um but well worth a read if it's if it's one you're going to consider starting on definitely trying to read all the other comments anybody has got any questions at all we'd love to have them what can can i ask what platforms are people on a couple of people said they were already on blue sky is everybody going to twitter at the moment um of, of the people who've joined us or are people just not sure where to go shall i create a little poll i'd love a little poll actually i'm genuinely just interested into into what people are thinking at the moment um there's just so many platforms out there and that, that could be a possible alternative um a couple of people yeah threads and blue sky um yeah sorry we missed the, the point about matt navara who um, is a massive massive twitter influencer he's been on um he's been on the platform since it started as far as i can work out and he has this week done a big exit becky very kindly you've done lots becky thank you put the link uh, of how he he handled his departure from Twitter again that's well worth a read um and he has decided to go and he set up camp on threads which is an interesting one to keep an eye on because he's such a big influencer in the in Twitter there you go a new poll has been launched if anyone fancies uh letting us know we're on oh sorry people have replied really want to make time to explore blue sky and mastodon haven't got around to it yet um yeah both tricky to get on blue sky again you need an invite or you're on the waiting list at the moment mastodon you have to pick a server and i always find that a bit odd um, that you have to pick your theme your your space before you've even got on there yet uh, but apparently you can jump to a different server at if you need to but you can't take your content with you which is interesting we're on x but have joined threads and blue sky also have facebook instagram staying put for now interesting lots of people are sitting mm. trying to work out what to do sorry karen no i can only have one it's only one answer <laughs> on the poll unfortunately um but yeah i mean it's it's just interesting to see like in the in responses there and, and in the conversations there's there's clearly a lot of disbursement going on um you know we i mean back in my kind of formative years um at, at kind of charity digital it was all about facebook and then it kind of gradually shifted towards twitter as, as facebook became more monetized um but you know we we as a sector have, have stayed pretty true to twitter because you know why wouldn't we when we could get ridiculous amounts of reach to report on um, when we were doing events. I remember doing a, a mental health event and, and doing some the first live tweeting for the charity back in probably 2012. And um, the the charity were absolutely terrified. But as soon as we we kind of showed the, the reach and the engagement, it was like, oh my God, digital is actually a thing that we can we can start to explore and to to produce. So for me there's like i said at the beginning there's a lot of kind of emotive memories about the power of twitter um to, to really form form change and to really kind of build um the the communities and um i can just see from helen she's asking um do you think there's a fear of leaving x after years of creating a good base of followers and not having much engagement um yes yes there definitely is um I think there's there's lots of people that are are so used to the platform that the the kind of the reliance um and the 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 safety net for for the way you use it is kind of becoming a bit of a, a sticker 
and and, and creating a, a hold on people but um you know as i see people like um leave twitter or, or just slowly spend less time there um you know i've slowly reduced my engagement on twitter but that's mainly because you know i mean lots of people on this call i've met through twitter um and they're not there anymore or or if they are i can't see them because the algorithm's hidden them from me and so you know that is kind of proving to me that maybe there are other places that i should probably look um but in terms of what i've been doing before leaving twitter it's been about finding that place so i've, I've spent a bit of time did a quick jump onto mastodon didn't really like it but that was probably because it was too early and i might want to to look back at that um you know threads i was an early adopter got quite excited and then realized that my mum was there and it was <laughs> which was a bit awkward um and then everyone stopped speaking on it and it became really really desolate and a real desert so you know the one that i'm enjoying personally is linkedin but like i said it's it's all about finding how you can build those relationships in places that you own so you don't have the risk that we've, we're facing at the moment on on twitter of of losing those relationships Teresa, yeah. what are your thoughts on that yeah, um, we've we've been on Twitter for so long, haven't we? We've got such yeah. a there. It is it is that fear. I just wanted to agree with that, definitely. Yeah, I'm also finding spending more time on LinkedIn and I like it. I feel like it's a very consistent platform. You know what you're getting out of it. And I really like that as a channel, the algorithm really keeps the content there. Like someone might engage with that the week after, which is not happening on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And I also feel creating a channel nowadays on new social platforms is not the same like five years ago it's really hard to get the engagement and the followers going yeah so it's also something to consider there's a lot of work the way social media has evolved yeah there's a huge amount of work you have to work out how to post there because mm. it's going to be the same as how you post everywhere else yeah it needs to be different because it's reaching a different audience um sorry just to touch on louise's uh, yeah mermaids have left their account active on twitter um there i don't think there's a risk to leaving an account active as long as you put on there that this is not an active account so that people aren't waiting um the only problem with it is if you ever decide to go back to it obviously it will be right at the bottom of the algorithm in a little box um and it it'll be unlikely to perform you know the way it used to uh, but yeah you can leave you can download your data and still leave your account active um there's no problem I think one thing to add on that is um you do see a lot of dormant accounts getting hacked. Um, yeah, so do. one thing you're doing is, is maybe set a reminder for yourself to just go on and just scroll a bit um, so that then the account's not completely dormant, but you're, yeah. not act and you're not actively posting, you're not actively engaging. You you might become more of the, the kind of armchair reviewer and scroller, um, but that means that you've, you've not got the risk of of your account being hacked and maliciously taken over. Yeah, and I think sorry, and in an answer to another one, uh, Twitter is not going to close inactive accounts unless they are showing bot or hacked behaviour, as far as I know. But again, these things change on a regular basis, and who knows what Elon's going to do next week? To be honest, um, there is obviously the danger that there is going to be a subscription fee on Twitter. He has announced he wants to. Um, and that would be for all accounts, whether inactive or active. Um, so obviously at that point, people may choose to, to shut down permanently to not pay that fee. Um, but yes, Becky, I feel sad about Twitter too. Mm -hmm. But we don't know, we don't know which way it's going to go. It could come all the way back round again. Mm -hmm. I really hope that the last hour, well, 55, 56 minutes has been really helpful um, to you. Um, I hope that it's given you a few points to think and kind of anchors to to kind of hold that decision to, um, you know, to explore where you might go, how you might do it, what you might have to do before, um, and and really kind of just 
have a moment to pause and think and reflect rather than doing anything in in haste um and that's this the session wasn't about telling you where else to go because we don't have those answers yet and for everyone the answer will likely be different um sadly which is really sad because i i love my my charity echo chamber that i used to have on twitter that is sadly disappearing um but yeah i i really hope that it's it's been helpful and um is really helping you make make these decisions and do so with a few tools in your in your back pocket So I'm going to stop the recording and um, we'll stay on the call for a little bit. Um, 